The revolutions of 1848 were a series of large-scale political movements in Europe that erupted against monarchical orders and traditional hierarchies with popular demands for freedom, equality, and fraternity. These revolutions paved the way for the end of feudal remnants and absolute monarchies and the rise of liberal and nationalist ideas. The economic changes and social injustices brought about by the Industrial Revolution led to widespread popular discontent, which in turn led to growing demands for reform in many parts of Europe. In this video, we will explore in detail the triggers of the 1848 revolutions, how they manifested differently in different countries across Europe, and their role in shaping modern Europe. We will also look at the impact of these revolutions on social classes, gender roles. The revolutions of 1848, which significantly changed the history of Europe, had begun in France, the site of the French Revolution that had previously plagued European monarchies. The revolution in France was like a bomb under the monarchies in Europe. When the 1848 revolution took place, King Louis-Philippe of France abdicated and fled the country. Republican students and middle-class people organized protest marches and clashed with the police. In the poorer eastern districts of Paris, a spontaneous uprising broke out and the masses revolted with the slogan, Vive la réforme. The revolution of 1848 in France immediately spread to other countries in Europe. Successful uprisings broke out in Vienna, Milan, Venice, Prague, Berlin, and in the provincial capitals and industrial cities of almost every German principality. The reactionary politicians barely escaped with their lives. The monarchs and aristocrats remained, but they kept their seats by promising to abide by a liberal constitution. Absolutism seemed to be over almost everywhere. Radical democratic demands such as universal suffrage for men, freedom of the press, the right to trial by jury and an end to aristocratic privileges and feudal payments seem to have been realized. But in the summer of 1848, the monarchs and aristocrats regained their confidence and declared war against the revolution. In the fall of 1848, revolutionary movements were crushed in Berlin, Vienna, and Milan. By the summer of 1849, the counter-revolution in Europe seemed to have won a victory. The February and March revolutions of 1848 were successful because the masses of small artisans, craftsmen, and workers rose up and defeated the armies and police forces commanded by monarchists and aristocrats. However, the governments formed after the revolution were composed of the propertied middle classes. People belonging to this class were not ready to risk their lives and careers by taking revolutionary action against the old authorities. In 1848, industrialization was developing rapidly throughout Europe and the capitalist classes were stronger than at the time of the French Revolution. There were many intellectuals in Britain and France who advocated the national state model. In Hungary and Poland, some nobles were already fighting for national independence. Workers and peasants were discontented with the growing power and wealth of the capitalists. Because these poor classes were suffering misery, workers and peasants were not only interested in democratic constitutions or feudal privileges, they demanded living conditions that threatened capitalist profits and capitalist property. The property-owning liberals would unite with their traditional enemies, the property-owning aristocrats and monarchists, to counter this. The workers who rose up in Paris in February 1848 had made significant gains. But the capitalist classes saw these gains as a danger and took them back from the workers. So the workers took up arms again. They set up barricades in the east of Paris and did their best to force the center. But this resistance was not successful, and the uprising was crushed. The defeat of the Parisian workers emboldened anti-revolutionaries everywhere. In the German kingdoms and principalities, the authorities began to close down left-wing and republican clubs, prosecute newspapers, and arrest agitators. In Italy, the Austrians defeated the army of Piedmont and regained control of Milan, while the Kingdom of Naples established military rule. Austrian general Windisch Graetz declared martial law in Prague after five days of fighting with the Czech middle class, students and workers. At the end of October, despite fierce popular resistance, he occupied Vienna and marched on Hungary. A week later, the Prussian king dissolved the constituent assembly in Berlin. It seemed that the old order was back in Europe. In France, where this whole revolutionary process had begun, the middle-class Republicans who had defeated the workers found that there was no one to defend them against the onslaught of the monarchy. However, the monarchists were divided among themselves, the heirs of the Bourbons and Louis-Philippe. 
and lacked the power to impose who should be king. This vacuum was filled by Napoleon's nephew, Louis Bonaparte. In late 1848, Louis Bonaparte was elected president, but in 1851, fearing he would lose the next election, he staged a coup d'etat. The following year he declared himself emperor. Although the uprisings that led to the 1848 revolutions were bloodily suppressed, nothing was ever the same in Europe. In Germany and Austria, it brought an end to feudal payments and serfdom, although it transformed the landowning Junkers into agrarian capitalists and changed little for the peasantry. The rulers of many German states agreed to constitutions that gave them the power to appoint governments and allowed for parliamentary representation of workers and peasants. While this was progress under monarchies, which did not give the bourgeoisie direct control over the state, the groundwork was laid for capitalist progress. In the years after 1848, Germany, France and Austria tried to realize their industrial revolutions. The bourgeoisie had lost the political struggle in 1848, but won the economic war in the 1860s. The bourgeoisie supported Louis Bonaparte in France and Bismarck in Germany. As a result, the revolutions of 1848 accelerated the process of further weakening of the monarchy in Europe and played an important role in strengthening the bourgeoisie and establishing bourgeois democracy in Europe. Although the poor classes did not achieve the results they wanted, they did gain parliamentary powers and constitutional changes.